What's going on, guys? Welcome back to the channel. Critical Overlord here. So we're going to be talking about Dennis Etchison's Halloween 4 Ghost Michael Myers concept screenplay. They got scrapped. We never got it. M Mustafa Akkad, I think, is cited as throwing this in the trash as well, along with the other things that he's thrown in the trash and he just didn't want to do. I think he's apparently found this one to be too cerebral for whatever reason. But we're going to go over and recap that scrap story going to what could have been as opposed to the halloween 4 that we all have right now that i know a lot of you know and love just as me so dennis etchison's halloween 4 would have fully embraced the supernatural elements of michael myers the shape would have quite literally been a shape some sort of ghost supernatural entity because this story uh, i'm going to be reading most of what i'm talking about today from the horror syndicate who did a great job recapping a lot of the important story beats and the article does include a link to the pdf copy of the screenplay if you want to check it out which i will leave a link to the site in the description but the story takes place 10 years after the events of john carpenter's halloween and its direct sequel halloween 2. it's not doing any of what we actually have gotten with halloween 4 meaning it's not retconning what happened at the end of halloween 2 where loomis and myers died and now they're magically alive both of these characters are still dead so what happens is the events from that night in 78 continue to haunt the town of haddonfield as the local residents particularly the adults live in fear and uncertainty as they are unable to let go of the past and find closure some believe that michael will return to finish what he started while others fear that one of the town's children will grow up to be like michael and bring a reign of terror to the citizens of haddonfield similarly to what happened in 78 as a result of this widespread of fear throughout the town, the celebration of the holiday has been banned and anything Halloween related is illegal. Even horror movies are deemed forbidden in an effort to repress the children and to avoid another incident. But it's only a matter of time before people begin to push back against the Halloween prohibition. And as a result, the shape emerges once again. Now, this script began with Lindsay Wallace's mother having a nightmare about the night in 78 when she and her husband returned home to discover that the terrible things or to discover those terrible things that had happened in their house and that her daughter had been a witness and was in harm's way. She awakens from the nightmare just after Lindsay breaks open, revealing Michael Myers, who lunges out at her. Mrs. Wallace is so frightened that she intentionally attempts to keep Lindsay who does not remember anything from that night away from Tommy Doyle, who recalls everything. So that's an interesting development. So the story primarily would have focused on teenage Tommy Doyle and Lindsay Wallace. As Mrs. Wallace tries to keep her daughter safe, at least from her perspective, Tommy makes efforts to reach out to Lindsay and tries to get her to remember and embrace what had happened when they were children. He believes that the adult's efforts to repress and control the youth is damaging them, and he tries to convince her to leave the town with him and to never look back. You have Sheriff Lee Brackett back, as well as Deputy Garrett Hunt, who have an eventful day dealing with protesters, multiple robberies, and an overbearing PTA calling for stronger censorship as local and neighboring businesses fight to keep their doors open by pushing back against a relatively new law that has been established by the town. The television news station is looking to stir the pot amidst the protesters and threats for running the ads for the Lost River Drive-In. And in an effort to boost ratings, news anchor Robert Mundy is assigned to cover a retrospective on Michael Myers and the murders of 1978. Mundy is actually one of the more likable and down-to-earth characters in the screenplay. He reluctantly takes the assignment after some arm twisting by his boss, but he clearly just wants to leave things be and move on, aware that the topic and events has already had a negative effect on the community. He begins trying to contact the survivors for interviews after being unable to gather contact information for Lois Strode, who left town after graduating in 1979. He attempts to interview Tommy, but angsty Tommy isn't very cooperative, which is a which is a silver lining of a missed or which is a silver of a missed opportunity because both characters essentially felt the same way about how Halloween had changed the town. But instead, Tommy lashes out at Mundy for keeping it going. Mundy follows this up with a trip to Smith's Grove to ask about changes to security measures and, of course, one or two questions about Michael Myers. Here he is met by the facility's new director, Dr. Marion Stern, formerly known as Marion Chambers. Here Marion is on full damage control mode and shows Mundy a VHS recording of a Michael and Loomis session while making a bold suggestion that Michael may have been a product of Loomis, Loomis's madness. Now, I will say the treatment of Loomis in this screenplay is a little bit baffling and disheartening and very pitiful i would say the way they depict dr loomis uh then you have the secondary characters or secondary teenagers 
like Keith and Richie. They are basically the secondary teenagers in the screenplay, aside from Tommy and Lindsay, who are both recognized as outcasts among their peers. The story eventually brings all of the characters together for a third act. All the teenage characters make their way to the Lost River Drive-In, unaware that some of their friends have already been killed by the shape. A lot of these kills from what I read in the screenplay seem to be off screen, so that obviously I would have tweaked that if this ever came to be an actual fourth movie. Meanwhile, the police are on the search for Tommy and Lindsay. When they catch the word that there have been multiple murders, as the news spreads, panicked parents and the police, as well as Marion Stern and Robert Mundy, flock to the drive-in, but they are too late. Most of the kids have been killed, leaving only Lindsay left. As the shape pursues her, Tommy, who disappeared for a chunk of the script after pulling a gun on Hunt, shows up and gets the first shots off, putting Lindsay in the clear and allowing Brackett and the police to open fire. Now, as the shape is getting peppered with bullets, this is the weirdest part of this story. He begins to grow, becoming 10 feet tall at one point, and then as bullets hit parked vehicles, there's a wave of explosions. When the smoke clears, the shape is nowhere to be found, and Tommy and Lindsay escape on the opposite side of the drive-in from their parents and police deciding to leave town for good. Monday and the cameraman catch the two teenagers leaving, and Monday blocks the camera, telling the cameraman that he didn't see anything and requests the cameraman hand over the tape. I will say that the screenplay again, if you read this, from the brief pages I read through, there was a potential for this to end up being better than the Halloween 4 we got. The problem is there are also several other things that I would have never have done, such as the fact that I would not have done a ghost Michael Myers story. That's not to say that again, that the overall quality could not have potentially ended up being better than the fourth movie we have. I also would have tweaked the treatment of Loomis and his relationship with Myers and how he was portrayed as this madman. Granted, that's how he was eventually portrayed in Halloween 5, but with a little bit more of a good reason. At least he's the one actually doing it and it's not coming from one of his colleagues previously, Marion Chambers. The off-screen deaths, I would have changed that. The 10 foot tall Myers, <laughs> that could have been very comical to see on screen. So we probably dodged a bullet since this didn't happen. But focusing on Lindsay and Tommy, a lot of potential there, a lot of potential there. Definitely has some Nightmare on Elm Street vibes to it as well with the town trying to suppress Michael from the kids out of fear and the way they're treating Michael I like that angle but there's also these other aspects of it that I think really just I would not have done it's kind of a mixed bag for me I see its potential but I'm kind of glad we didn't get it let me know what you guys think about this down in the comment section below if you haven't already of course make sure you subscribe turn on post notifications and miss a video in the description I have links to my social media accounts I am on Facebook Twitter and Instagram you can message me there of course if there's any movies news or reviews you'd like me to cover in the future and with all that in mind guys I will see you in the next video